What's up dudes and girls, we're here at the gym and we have a fun episode. Today it's gonna be pitting dumbbells against barbells to see who wins, what's better, what's not, the advantages, the disadvantages, and this is in celebration of our release of the dumbbell only program, the Buff Dude dumbbell only program. So we're pretty happy about that, just finished it up. And now we're gonna see who wins, the dumbbell dudes or the barbell bros. Let's get this started. Yeah. All right, the first exercise of the workout, pitting the barbell versus the dumbbells. And we're gonna be doing the squat, one of the most uh, well-known exercises you can do, especially for compound movements. You're gonna see with an exercise like that is the bar is placed on the upper back area and it's gonna raise your center of gravity. So it's really gonna require you to use that core to help stabilize you. Now using the dumbbells in the same way is gonna be a little bit more difficult. One, you don't have a rack to be able to unrack it. So if you're doing really heavy weight, it's way more accessible and easier to get that weight ready to go. And it's gonna be more stable in that bar position to be placed upon your back. So that way, when you're hitting those PRs, you're gonna be doing it with a barbell and not dumbbells. Ugh. As you can tell, using the dumbbells are a little bit more difficult if you wanna do kind of like a standard squat where the weight is actually placed more on the top half of your body. In this case, the shoulders. The barbell, they're gonna be placed on the upper back area. The shoulders, the dumbbells make it a little bit more difficult. It almost turns into almost like a front squat. So it's hard getting that weight up, especially if you're gonna try to go a little heavy. But the good thing is that is an option for you and you can immediately change in it to a different exercise. So although you can still do the dumbbells placed on your shoulders, to get kind of like a normal squat, you can also do like a farmer squat. So you can immediately place them down. So it's gonna lower your center gravity. You're gonna feel a little bit more grounded. It's gonna change the exercise a little bit more because you're placing the dumbbells beside you and then you can bust up those squats in that way too and not need like a trap bar. So I think this one's pretty even. Although with the heavier weights, you wanna stick with the barbell, you have a rack, but if you don't have a rack, the dumbbells are gonna be a little bit more um, universal in that sense. So I feel like um, this is a pretty pretty even fight so far. I think it's time to move on to the next exercise, which is gonna be the deadlift. So here we are at the deadlift station here. Now we're starting off with the barbell. And we got 225 pounds on, as you can see, not too heavy, not too light. This is the standard deadlift. But let's say you don't have a barbell, you only have dumbbells. So let's try to perform the deadlift with dumbbells. There's a few differences, as you can see, when trying to perform the deadlift with the dumbbells, which is gonna be, it's gonna be a lot lower to the ground for one. Two, since it's not a solid bar, the stability of the lift is gonna change quite a bit. So there's gonna be a little motion in the dumbbells. Even if you hold them together, it's gonna feel a little bit awkward. And since it's a little bit lower to the ground, if you're lacking in any kind of mobility, you're gonna feel it immediately in that lower back because you're having to squat a little bit lower. So it's changing the form, a little bit of the motion too. But the good thing is, it is similar, it can be, to let's say deficit deadlift. So since it is lower to the ground, you're gonna be a little bit more activation and push through the glutes and the legs in the beginning position. So it's not bad by any means, but it definitely changes the lift. It's not quite the same as a standard deadlift with the barbell. So I feel like in this particular lift, the barbell does win out because there's not really any variation to the standard barbell deadlift that you can do with the dumbbells. But the good thing with the dumbbells, you can still perform the exercise. It's just gonna change it up a little bit, so be aware of that. So the barbell, deadlift, I think it belongs to the barbell. So we made it to the bent over rows, and the bent over barbell row is a major movement for the back. And it's a rowing motion, obviously. So it is primarily working the latissimus dorsi, but it's also working a little bit with the rear delts and the biceps is a secondary muscle group. And of course, we are pairing it up against the dumbbell version of the same kind of motion. Now immediately you'll feel a difference. The dumbbells are working independently from each other. So there's gonna be a little bit more stabilization involved. So if you have a weaker side, you can immediately kind of feel one side pulling a little bit more over the other one. And you're gonna have to kind of consciously fix that. Um, and that could be one good thing about the dumbbells have over the barbell is you can key in on some of those issues but you can also, with the dumbbell, change the motion too. So as you can see, you can immediately change it more into a close row, bringing the elbows a little bit closer to the body and getting a little bit more activation in those lats as a comparison to the bent over row, which is gonna be working a little bit more the upper back with the lats too. So 
that slight change, that slight different angle is going to put a little bit more focus on different parts. And that is one good thing that the dumbbells have over the barbell. The barbell is a little bit more stable. You can put more weight on it. You can really go row, you can really go heavy. And, um, but of course I think in this case, to have that versatility uh, is a little bit better to make sure that you're getting the full uh, benefits of a certain exercise or many exercises. So, you know, I feel like the dumbbells kind of went out on this one a little bit, but um, that's just my personal opinion. And it means a lot because I'm a buff dude. So we just got to the bench press. As you can tell, we are performing the Golden Five, all the major compound movements, start of the squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, and now on to the bench press, hitting that chest. So we're starting with the barbell bench press first, and then we're moving on to the dumbbell press to compare the two. I think you'll notice right away when anytime you perform a barbell exercise to a dumbbell exercise, the dumbbells are gonna feel heavier. Usually you're not gonna be able to press as much weight, typically. There is, uh, it requires a bit more stabilization, of course, because the dumbbells are independent from each other. Um, but I think it's just, it's an interesting way to look at always switching things up. So of course, if you are very normal, if you're, if you're typically go to the barbell for all of your movements, if you find yourself switching it up to dumbbell, you're immediately gonna feel a major difference and you could possibly find yourself pretty weak in a lot of those same movements you do with a barbell because of course the barbell is going to be more stable. It's gonna feel more stable. You're unracking it from a top position. You can go right into the repetitions, but with dumbbells, you're gonna have to lift them up. You're gonna have to require a lot more energy to get them into position. And then when you're actually doing the movement itself, since they are independent from each other, you're having to stabilize the motion. You kind of have to kind of think about it a little bit more than you would typically for a just a normal barbell motion. So as you can see, the positioning of the dumbbells are not flat like they would be the barbell. They're at a slight angle and that angle is allowing my shoulders to drop down a little bit more and my elbows to run a little bit tighter. It's gonna help open my shoulder up a bit more of the joint so it's a bit more comfortable for me during that press. Now it is a little bit more difficult as you can tell. I can't push quite as much weight as I can on the barbell as, uh, as fluid or as stable, but it still feels better for my shoulder, which is nice. And I feel a little bit more activation in my chest too because I can bring the dumbbells inward as I press up. So it is kind of creating a little bit more motion in the movement and get a little bit more benefits out of it too. So I feel like um, the mouse and barbell, baby. Kind of like the dumbbell for me personally. Dumbbells feel a little bit better than the barbell on the press. Here we go, we got the overhead press. Um, starting with the barbell, going right on the dumbbell. As you can see the barbell, it just feels more stable. It feels more comfortable. You can press more weight. It's pretty much that straight up and down motion. With the dumbbells, it feels pretty unstable. It feels difficult. Once you get in that top position, each arm is feeling a little bit more kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, wonky in a way. So. Dumbbells are quite a bit tougher. Um, the good thing about the dumbbells is of course you can change the angles immediately to make it slightly different. So you can go into like an Arnold press, you can do kind of more of a close press here, um, and you can press upwards and also inwards. So you can vary up the motion quite a bit. Um, so I feel like that's just the benefit. But I gotta be honest, I'm, all, I'm in love with the barbell overhead press. It's one of my favorites for the shoulder development. And you can go right into a push press too to go really heavy on it. Um, the dumbbells, they, it, it kind of honestly, it feels a little scary if you're going heavy with the dumbbells in the standing position, because you know, it's just, it just requires so much more activation, not only the core, much like the barbell press, but also in the shoulder joint too, because you really have to stabilize that motion to get that top position. So for the safety, if you're having any kind of shoulder injuries or, or issues, um, the barbell can feel a little bit more stable, a little bit more safer. But of course, it's always good to push yourself in a way that if you're not very stable in the shoulders, switch it up to some dumbbells that you are working on that shoulder stability um, to make sure that you're gonna get the kind of benefits and even other exercises that you need to have a really st uh, sturdy and stable shoulder joint in. So there you go. I think uh, they both have their benefits. We love you both. It's hard to pick sides. It's like choosing which kid you like more, you know? Once my brother, once he has a couple kids, I'm gonna ask him, is it true that you have a favorite or is it actually true that your parents always tell you like, we don't have any favorites, you know? We love you both equally. I kind of call bullshit on that, but you know, I don't know. But now here I am not picking a favorite in the barbell and dumbbell, so they're like my children. Now I feel like I know what they're talking about. I'm like a parent. Barbell, dumbbell, I love you both equally.
but I also hate you too. The barbell skull crusher, definitely a good movement to build that size and strength in the triceps. The problem is not everyone can actually perform this particular exercise with the barbell. You can kind of have that tennis elbow maybe, some tendonitis in the elbow. So doing this motion with the barbell, sometimes put a little pressure on the elbow and you won't be able to perform it correctly. So let's say you have that issue. Hey, good thing is we got some dumbbells. So we're gonna hit some dumbbell skull crushers up and, uh, and see how that feels and, and see what kind of motions that we can perform with them to make it a little bit easier or more difficult. You're creating a little bit more motion in there, so you're getting a little rotation as well. So we're kind of having that little bit more of a neutral grip, palms facing each other, and uh, extending from that position. But as you're extending, you're rotating as well and getting the squeeze at the top. So you're adding a little bit of extra motion there. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but also the positioning of the palms facing each other can sometimes be a little bit more comfortable um, for the elbow joint or the shoulder joint too in that starting position rather than having the forearms rotate, the arms and the hands rotated outward a little pressure in there so you can just keep it in that kind of more hammer position while performing the skull crushes with the dumbbells so you can always make those tiny adjustments and sometimes it feels a little bit better but then that's all adding that extra movement can make it a little bit more difficult as well get a little bit more activation in those triceps so any little bit helps ah oh, you dumbbells thank you for existing you're awesome So we had to do some curls. We gotta give the arms and biceps some love. So we are hitting the also well-known isolation exercise for the biceps, which is gonna be the barbell curl. And it is one of my favorite bicep exercises of all time. I mean, I built my biceps by doing thousands of barbell curls. Easy elbow flexion up and down. That's all it really takes. So you don't have to think about it too much. But then we're moving on to the dumbbell curls now. The motion is pretty much the same, but you can also add supination into that. So there's a lot of movements to muscles that you might not be aware of totally or take advantage of. So with the biceps, of course, the elbow flexion is one of the primary movements that the bicep helps with, but also the supination of the forearm is another major motion. So if you add in supination with the flexion, of the elbow, that means you're working those biceps that much more. The dumbbells, in this case, the extra motion and the extra exercises you can throw in immediately, like hammer curls, and uh, you can throw in alternating curls, immediately it's going to increase the activation and the variety of an exercise, a simple exercise. Barbell curl, dumbbell curls, it's all curls, baby. It's all building those biceps and we love them. <sighs> There we go, the barbell versus dumbbell workout. And as you can tell, there's a lot of different exercises that you can perform with the barbell and dumbbells. Barbells, of course, you got your deadlifts, your squats, your red press, your bent over rows, your bench press, all the classic exercises you can perform to get bigger, stronger, faster, and better. But with the dumbbells, of course, you can do similar type of movements, but you can add a little variation to that too. So you're not typically gonna get the same type of list always as you would with the barbell, but that's the good part, and that's the whole point of this video, is showing that the variety and the, the universal uh, ability with dumbbells over barbells. So if you only have a pair of dumbbells, there's thousands of exercises you can perform, and some of those exercises we include in our new dumbbell-only workout program. We have the tutorials in the back there, so you can make sure you're performing exercises appropriately. There you go, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I know I did, I got a pretty good workout using the barbell and dumbbell. And until next time, see you.